Regan of Calvert Crunchies here, and I am so excited to finally bring you guys our latest cosplay build. When Riot Games contacted us to help bring the new Sentinels of Light vein skin to life, we were just over the moon about this project. We have been working so hard for the last few months. It's been kind of under wraps, but finally we can share with you how we constructed both the outfit itself as well as her super new crossbow. So stay tuned for this video, which is a general walkthrough of all of this information, as well as some upcoming tutorials for how you can construct your own version. So this version of Vane's costume is actually from the new Before Dawn cinematic release. It's a tiny bit different from the in-game skin, but most of it is kind of the same same look and feel. She's got this really cool, very skin-tight bodysuit with a lot of blocking on it. The trickiest thing about the before planning stage is that if you look closely, you can see just an absolute ton of interesting seams and patterning, not just where the color blocking itself is, but even just within the solid colors of the suit itself. And when you have that kind of blocking, the absolute easiest thing to do for yourself is to make a mock-up and actually draw where those lines are gonna fall on a real-life human model. It's best if you have a friend, or in this case, a wife, to actually help you in the process, but you can do it yourself if you really need to. When we got started, we chose a mock-up fabric with as similar a stretch as we could find to the fabric that we would eventually be using. It ended up being this brown thing, but who cares, it's a mock-up. Using the models that Riot sent us as a reference, we drew on all of those very intricate seam lines and color blocking areas. Once done, you can cut that pattern apart and you essentially have a guideline for how you can construct your fashion fabric. The exact same process is is what we used to create her very complicated thigh-high boots. These were a very interesting puzzle to construct. Lots and lots of color blocking here, lots of interesting seams down on the calf area, and in fact, it kind of looks like it's made out of two different types of material. Not necessarily the fashion fabric and how the light reflects on here, but if you look closely, it's a really skin-tight top leg, while the bottom leg has this interesting puff and indentation that kind of indicates that it's a little thicker than something that might be super skin-tight. Related to that, kind of as a general cosplay construction note, you always want to think about these kind of things before you start cutting into your fabric. Take a look at your costume. Do pieces of it need to stretch? Do they need to be solid? How are you gonna get it on and off your body? You should have these kinds of game plans before you begin constructing anything at all. With the boots, what we actually ended up doing is have not one, not two, not three, but four different pieces that you put on separately. That's because they're all really kind of different and it just seemed to make a lot more sense to keep them all separated out rather than fight with the fabric. The top leg portion, we ended up actually attaching to the shorts and that's so that everything can ride nice and smooth. It won't fall down at all. We've got our invisible thigh highs right here. This is not my skin, this is just spandex. And the reason for that is not that I'm afraid to show my thighs, but it just, works so well for keeping those really weird boots upright. Nothing will ever wrinkle, they'll always stay in place. Plus it'll pull the shorts down as well. We actually have even more invisible skin underneath the thigh high area. And that's to, while this pulls it up, this will pull it down. And once again, we have everything nice and not wrinkling and smooth, and it'll just look really good and be comfortable when I'm wearing it. For the upper thighs, these were made to stretch, and so they're made out of a skin-tight, stretchable fabric. We ended up going with Yaya Han's collection of really nice matte neoprene. I love this stuff, honestly. It's a little bit tricky to apply in bias tape like this. As you can see here, there is so much hand sewing involved, so just be prepared for that. But the look is really nice. It was very important for us to kind of mimic these very distinct textures that Vade has. And so we knew we wanted to go with this amazing matte kind of vinylish fabric. And then for the chest, we wanted something with a little bit of that leather texture. As a quick note, Yaya actually has her own how-to construction video for Vane. If you're more into the classic skin, you can check it out in the link that I'm gonna pop in here. It looks really amazing. I highly recommend it. For the lower half of the boots, even though the top is going to stretch, we didn't think that the bottom really needed to. We wanted something skin tight, but with a little bit of padding so we can get these really nice, interesting lines that are all throughout the model. To create that, the bottom half zips open and closed with a zipper. 
And in fact, there is a lot of spacer padding inside. And if you're asking, well, what's spacer padding? Spacer fabric is essentially a very thick, breathable fabric that will give a lot of body to your fabric pieces. If you want a little bit of bulk in your piece, you take the fat spacer, lay it on the wrong side of your fashion fabric, baste both pieces together, and suddenly you have one piece that is a lot thicker and still looks exactly like your chosen fashion fabric. And then finally, the third and fourth piece of this very complex thigh-high boot are the kneecaps as well as the shoes themselves. Both of these, and really the entire costume itself, used a lot of foam wrapped in this neoprene fabric. This has two great advantages. One, it's really stretchy. Number two, it looks really good. I'm very pleased with the way these two turned out, and they are an absolute perfect match for the rest of the cosplay in a way that painted foam may not be. We use this method all over the outfit. We used this on the glove. We used it on the belt. We also used it on little trim pieces in order to give that bias even more body. In order to create this fabric wrapped look, you need to start with your base foam piece. For the kneecap here, we have a really complex curve and a distinct line down the middle. So I started with four different pieces and glued each one together in order to create that shape. My my glue of choice is barge contact cement. Different contact cement works as well. Hot glue will in a pinch. However, you have a lot less wiggle room and it won't really flex when you're finished. Once completely dry and sealed, it's time to lay the fabric on top. In order to hold everything in place on the correct side, we're going to use this heavy duty spray in order to spray the back of the fabric and then press it into place onto the foam. Then gently pull and stretch the fabric until it wraps all the way around the foam. This was especially hard with this kneecap because it is such a complex shape. This method is a lot easier for really flat geometric things like the belt, but it does work here as long as you have enough patience and are very careful with it. Once you've wrapped it all the way around, flip your foam piece over and then apply more of that contact cement to the underside. You wanna give it a few minutes in order to become really tacky so that you can then fold and press that fabric right into that glue. With the white portion of the kneecap done, it's time to repeat the process for the blue outer piece. When cutting out your fabric to wrap, make sure it's the same size as your foam, but with an extra half an inch excess so that you can wrap it around the edge. For this piece, I actually didn't want to finish wrapping before I applied it to the kneecap. Instead, I wanted to wrap the entire thing in that blue fabric so that we get this very, very nice edging, absolutely no seam lines, and it really does look like one single piece. To do that, before I wrap the outside of the glue, I actually glued that little raised edge to the white kneecap. Once that was dry, I wrapped the rest of the fabric all the way around the whole knee piece. We use a really similar method of fabric wrapping for the shoes. Essentially, when you look at your model, you have to think, well, what are the different breakdowns of pieces? I have one piece here, I have one piece here, and I have pieces here. So these are all three different pieces of foam that I wrapped separately, glued on, and then layered on top, obviously starting with the bottom and then moving my way up. Breaking down your cosplay for this really does help make your life a lot easier, and I think it actually looks very clean when you make it into lots of little moving parts like this. On the subject of pre-planning how to break down your piece, we also did a lot of planning for the bodice portion. Again, considering what needs to stretch, what doesn't need to stretch, and what needs to be color blocked. These bottom pieces we wanted to be very puffy. Instead, we interlined them with a heavier duty piece of fabric before hand sewing them onto the bodice. For geometric shapes like her knives, her brooch, or even the little square pieces on her boots, we really like to use our 3D printer. This is especially great if you need to make multiple copies of the same exact thing like these knives, and also it makes sure that everything is really symmetrical. You can even do more of that really neat fabric wrapping with the 3D print even though it's not foam. It's actually really stable and looks really nice. Wrapping your print in fabric also makes it sewable, which means that it will never fall off your costume. The cape was an interesting conundrum. Her collar is very strange, and it took us a while to pattern out. I ended up making quite a lot of mock-ups, including a duct tape model. Eventually, we got it right, and we added some nice stiffness with a layer of canvas. The final piece, of course, is Vane's iconic red sunglasses. I really like how these turn out. I think I look very cool in them. These are a great beginner's project. I'll link the glasses that I bought down below, and all you need is a little bit of thermoplastic, in this case Thibro, for a nice smooth finish, 
pop onto the edges. And last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about Vane's signature crossbow. One of the things we really love doing with cosplay is combining materials whenever they make sense. And in this case, this is a pretty hefty combination of 3D printed pieces as well as foam for the weight. If you look closely at her model, some of the pieces are spaced at an angle. And so to keep everything really lightweight and for stability, we opted to make these out of foam, whereas the base of this very geometric shape was made from a 3D print. Anytime you're 3D printing, the bulk of your work is usually going to be the sanding process. You always want to do some level of finishing in order to remove those very obvious lines. Sometimes your print isn't perfect, and that's okay. You can always fill in any divots and gaps with spackle like I'm doing here, gesso, or any number of fillers. Scone and I are so happy with the way that Vane turned out. I think she was well worth the effort, and we actually have a lot of tutorials and more in-depth behind the scenes coming soon if you guys want to stay here and subscribe to our channel. We actually do not have planned which one we're doing first, so if there is one you want to see, please let us know below, and that will probably sway my decision. If you haven't checked out the Before Dawn trailer, definitely be sure to do that, and we'll see you next time.